thing you are looking at right now is not an airplane hangar or a factory. It is actually a college football stadium located in Moscow. Not Moscow, Russia, but Moscow, Idaho. The stadium is known as the Kibbe Dome, which is the home for multiple Idaho Vandals athletic teams. Why is the stadium 15 minutes away from Pullman, Washington so special? And why is it worth talking about? Well, this architectural marvel has developed a cult following and has an extremely interesting history. This is the history of the Kibbe Dome and why you should care. WA270 East is an extremely important piece of road for those traveling from Pullman, Washington to Moscow, Idaho. It is about a nine mile highway that really does not have much on it besides the rolling hills and the exit towards the airport. But as you approach the Washington, Idaho state border heading east, a very interesting landmark comes into view. Many assume that this landmark is just some airport hangar. It is not. It is the Kibbe Dome. Some students joke that the stadium looks like a giant beer can on its side. The stadium's actual name is the ASUI Kibbe Activity Center, but many call it the Kibbe Dome. The funny thing is, technically, the Kibbe Dome is not actually a dome. Alec Holser, a founding partner of Opus Architecture in Portland, Oregon, who led the 2011 renovation of the building, told ESPN, Here's the irony. The Kibbe Dome is not really a dome. There are other geodesic domes made of wood, but this is actually a vault. This is an arch-shaped continuous roof like a blimp hangar. In fact, one of the few other structures of similar gargantuan size were the blimp hangars built in World War II. For the Kibbe Dome, Idaho played in Neal Stadium while members of the Pacific Coast Conference. The Vandals were a good team and the seats were always filled no matter the weather. Jim Nierbauer told the Idaho's Alumni Association the team was one of the shining things in athletics. You did what you had to do as long as you had dry socks. Former NFL player Arthur Anderson remembers how head coach Skip Staley had a bus parked on the sideline at one fall home game. When players weren't in the game, they could sit in the heated bus. Neal Stadium would be destroyed by a fire in 1969, but had been condemned in 1968. It was now time for a new stadium for the Idaho football team to play in. Throughout the 1960s, there were rumors of a joint stadium between Idaho and Washington State due to how close they were to each other. Despite the rumors, the grandstands, press box, and grass infield were built. The original plan was to have a football stadium with a seating capacity between 20,000 to 30,000 people and a basketball stadium next door. Due to budget cuts, the stadium capacity was scaled down to 18,000 seats and combined with the basketball arena. The ASUI Kibbe Activity Center debuted as an open-air facility on October 9, 1971. The giant wooden roof would not be finished until 1975. The roof is made completely out of wood, which it wears as a badge of honor. The University of Idaho launched the first forestry department in the country in 1909 and is still today one of the school's proudest programs. Holster spoke on the feet saying, It's crazy construction. They literally got a contract to basically build a dome over the existing stadium, which is just nuts. An ESPN article published earlier this week writes, Holster said it's a remarkable feat of engineering using the company's wood truss system with steel joints particularly when you consider that it was all done by hand calculations in a pre-computer era. The roof spans 400 feet across, covering 4.5 acres, and the center is 144 feet above the field level, equivalent to a 12-story building. Holzer goes on to say, More recently, some soccer stadiums around the world have been built with wood, but in terms of wood football stadiums, it's the only one that I'm aware of that really qualifies. There are not many, if any, in the world, certainly in the U.S., that would be a wooden structure covering that kind of distance. The effects of the design, which were unintended might I add, create a home field advantage for the Vandals. Holzer told ESPN, the curved shape does focus some of the sound down to the floor. It's particularly bad on the field, or it's good, depending on which way you want to look at it. The crazy thing is, even visiting coaches have come to adore the stadium's unique features. Now SMU head coach Sonny Dykes told ESPN, I played there in 2011 when I was at Louisiana Tech. I love the place. There were between 6,000 to 8,000 people at the game and it sounded like between 60,000 and 80,000. It was deafening. I've coached at a bunch of big places and that was as loud as any place I've ever been. The stadium's unique design also makes it tough for the officials when deciding whether a field goal is made or not as we learned last year. Due to space constraints, the goalposts are attached to the wall behind both end zones and in a tied game between Eastern Washington and Idaho this past spring, 
Officials mistakenly called a field goal that was made no good in a tied game during the fourth quarter. Idaho would go on to win the game 28-21 and the Big Sky released a statement after the game saying, The physical setup of the scoreboard and catwalk directly adjacent to the uprights in the end zone of the Kibbe Dome create a unique condition when determining whether a kick is good. Many players have fond memories when it comes to the Kibbe Dome, but there were some drawbacks. Due to the stadium becoming a shared space between basketball and football, among other sports, the roll-up mechanism first installed in 1972 originally had a flat carpet turf surface. You had as much traction in tennis shoes as you did with cleats. You may also guess what I'm about to say next. The surface was not forgiving. The playing surface was as forgiving as the parking lot fans were tailgating in. 18 years later, the surface was replaced by AstroTurf, which was not much of an improvement. Players would wrap their forearms and knees in gauze to protect against rug burn. Doug Nussmeyer, the current Cowboys quarterback coach, spoke on the turf saying, I've got many a scar on my body from turf burns on that turf. I think we had the hardest turf in the country. You would get burned nonstop. Finally in 2007, field turf was finally installed. Nussmeyer also told ESPN another drawback at the stadium saying, I remember we would always hate when the rodeo would come to town in the wintertime. We're doing winter conditioning and they would bring in belt trucks full of dirt to make the rodeo area and you'd just be inhaling all these diesel fumes and dust in the air because they dumped dirt everywhere. It was just miserable. Another issue with the stadium was the fact that due to it being ma completely made out of wood, there was no natural light. The lighting bill was massive. When Holster was brought in to talk about renovations, he also discovered a massive issue. Over the years, the end walls began to deteriorate. They were just covered with a single layer of plywood and woodpeckers put holes in them so if you stood in there, you'd see these beams of light coming through. It didn't really have any insulation and apparently the heating system had conked out 25 years ago. And so it got progressively colder in there as the season went on. Of course with the bird holes that added to the wind coming through the space. Some Idaho officials thought it may be time to destroy the dome and return to the old Bull Stadium. The reasoning was they thought it may have been too expensive to fix and the fact that football was best played in the elements. The cost to tear down the dome and to fix it to meet seismic and building regulations was not much different. Kyle Bonagira and Dave Wilson write in their ESPN article, Holzer replaced the wooden end walls with glazed fiberglass panels, bringing light into the dome and saving the school $100,000 the first year in electrical bills. He managed to preserve an indoor facility for more uses than only football. The athletic department also uses the dome as its home for soccer, tennis, and indoor track and field. Otherwise, the venue hosts everything from concerts, intramurals, and graduation to the Palooza Pinewood Derby and the Lionel Hampton International Jazz Festival, winner of the National Medal of Arts in 2007. The stadium has also been used as a basketball arena since 2001 with inspirations from the Carrier Dome, but the Vandals will have a brand new basketball arena debuting later this month. Alex Boatman, a former walk-on long snapper, spoke fondly of the Dome saying, The Dome is home. The Dome kind of personifies our university and everything we are. It just kind of shows Idaho is a state of trying to get by. It's like, hey, we're going to play like five sports in here and get by with as little as possible facility-wise. The Kibbe Dome has also inspired a challenge in NCAA Football 14, the game where I learned about the stadium and back when the Vandals were still in FBS school. Just a few weeks ago, a Reddit user started a thread called the Kibbe Dome Challenge. Make this the number one toughest place to play. At one point, even the local Walmart sold Kibbe Dome t-shirts. From 1997 to 2017, the 16,000 seat stadium was the smallest in capacity at the FBS level, yet the stadium had developed such a strong following. I love the Kibbe Dome and is one of my favorite college football stadiums. I hope to get out there one day for a game. This quirky stadium is definitely one of a kind. But what is your favorite college football stadium? Let me know in the comments section below. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out my other videos right here. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And as always, remember to embrace the grind.